Hello students, welcome to the next lecture on the sequence and series. Today we will discuss about Leibniz test for the alternating series. This test is also called as alternating series test. Myself, Dr. Gar, working in the School of Mathematics, Thapar Institute. You can simply follow my YouTube channel, Dr. Harish Gar, where you are finding the various videos of the sequence and series as well as of the real analysis. What we have discussed so far, we have discussed all those tests in our previous video which are applicable only for the positive infinite series as of here. But in this lecture, we will see how you can solve the convergence nature of this alternating series that is minus 1 raised to power n over here. Uh, for this alternating series, there is a test called as the Leibniz test also called as the alternating series test that we will discuss in this lecture. But first of all, what is the meaning of the alternating series? Any of the series which of the form plus minus plus minus are there is called as the alternating series. We can express this series in terms of here. If n is equal to 1 then the first term will be by positive, positive a1 minus a2 and so on. If it is there then again the first term is by positive then negative and so on and again in this case it is a minus a1 plus a2 minus a3 and so on. So in all these cases we can representing this as a alternating series. For example, you can see here the first term is positive, then negative, then positive, then negative. This is the example of the alternating series. Same for the second case example. Similarly, if you look about this, if I start from the end, if nothing is given to you, then it means it's from 1 to infinity. So if you if you look about that, because of this presence term, this series is my alternating series. So how we can solve the convergence nature of this alternating series? Remember. Whatever the test we have discussed so far, that is the nth term test, partial sum sequence, geometric series, ratio test, root test are not applicable for such kind of the alternating series. So for that we need the Leibniz test. And this test is applicable only for the alternating series. So any alternating series is convergent if it satisfies these three properties. What are those? The first one is whatever this a n it must be the positive it is a sequence of the a n must be the decreasing and the limit is zero when any when all these three conditions satisfied then we can say this series is convergent by using Leibniz test how you can prove that it's a decreasing so we know there are the two methods first one is a n plus one minus of a n must be less than zero for some n which is greater than of some numbers otherwise we can take that derivative and it should be less than 0 then it, we can say it's a decreasing sequence. If any of the series does not satisfy any at least one of these conditions then the series is not convergent. Now once it is here if you look about that if since it must be 0 remember that it must be 0 if instead of this 0 if it's some say finite number which is non zero then we can say it is an oscillating finitely series. It is not a convergent but it is an oscillatory finitely series. On the other hand if this limit is my infinite then we can say oscillatory infinitely series are. We will describe about the 15 examples in this lecture so that you can able to understand it this concept very easy. So look at the discuss the convergence of the series. So clearly says that because of this presence term it is my alternating series. So we can apply this three step rule. So what is the a n? If you compare this series with respect to here, what is the a n? a n is nothing but my 1 upon l n. So we can check about this nature of it. Now clearly say that what is the n is? n is my natural number. So n definitely be greater than or equal to 1. When n is greater than or equal to 1, clearly says that this number is my positive. Because when n is equal to 1, it is my 0. So 1 upon 0 is infinity which is again a positive but it is for some n you can say n is greater than or equal to 2 it is always positive. The first condition satisfied. How you prove that it is a decreasing? We can start with the a n plus 1 minus of a n. If you solve them you can see l n minus l n of n plus 1. So clearly says if you look about this uh, numerator this part l n because if you take n is say 1 so this is 0 this is my 0 minus l n 2 so which is again a less than 0 so it is less than 0 for all the values of the n or you can also take the derivative rule if you take the derivative of this a n what is the derivative of this this is a minus of this which is again less than 0 for all n therefore this second property satisfied 
third property clearly says that log of infinity is zero, so we can say it's a here. So since all these three properties are satisfied, so by using this Leibniz test, this series is my convergent. Look about this next example. Again, you can say it's a minus plus and then so on, so which is an alternating series. What is the nth term of this? You can say what is the how you can write this? This is a minus of this. So the first term is one, two, and so on. So I can say a n is nothing but one plus two up to n, and here is n cube. So one n is one. It is a two. So it is n plus one whole cube. This is my nth term. So what is the numerator? Is you can say this is a G A P series. So the sum of the A P series I can return like of this. Now it will be one is cancel out. So the series becomes my here. Now we can check about these three properties for this. Clearly says that for all the natural number, this number must be greater than zero. How you can prove that decreasing? You can start with here, or you can take the derivative as per your convenience. You can take the LCM. You can see it's a minus n square, which is always less than zero for all the values of n. What is the limit? You can clearly say that this is infinity by infinity. We can apply the allopter rule. We will get as a zero. So therefore, series is by convergent by using Leibniz test. You can see both the series are by alternating series, so there is only one test called as the Leibniz test applicable. In this case, what is the a n is one upon this, so which is clearly a positive number because in this case a must be the positive because otherwise root of a is complex number. How you can prove the decreasing sequence? You can simply take the derivative or you can take the a n plus minus a n. So in this case, you can take like here. So clearly says that this number is a less than zero. For all n, hence it is a decreasing. If you take the third property, uh, that is a limit n approaches infinity, which is uh, zero. So clearly says that by Leibniz test is a convergent. In this case, what is my a n? A n is nothing but my n raised to power half, which is clearly a positive number because when you take n is one, it's a zero. When you take n is one, then it's a zero. When you take n is two, then it's Which is again a positive number, and so on. You can take the derivative because it's it's sometimes it's not possible to find this as of here, which is a n plus one minus of a n. So either you can solve like this way, or you can take the derivative, which is here. Clearly says that this number is my less than zero for n is greater than equal to two. So the, because what is the log of two? That is nothing but point three or point six are there, which is a positive number. So, which is whenever n is greater than three, it is a positive. It's a less than zero. Also, we can say limit. What is the limit of the n raised to power one by n is always be the one. So, one minus one is zero. So, therefore, Leibniz test is a convergent series. Again, this is a alternating series, so we can apply this one. A n is my here, which is clearly say that it is a greater than zero. The first property satisfied. We can take the second property. Either you can take the derivative. Derivative is my minus because this number is always positive, so due to minus, it's a less than zero. What is the limit? Limit is my one, which is a non-zero. What is the meaning of that? It means the third condition of the Leibniz test is not satisfied. Therefore, series is not convergent. Remember, at least one of the condition violated, then it's not a convergent. But we already discussed that if this limit. Is a non-zero but a finite, then we call as the oscillatory finite series. It means this series is my oscillatory finitely series because they are check about the convergence of the nature. Similarly, for the second part, again this is my a n. You can write this number as here, which is clearly greater than zero. First property satisfied. You can take the a n plus one minus a n, so this will be cancel out. You can see that if you take the LCM because of this minus, it will be my Less than zero for all n. If you look about the third property, what is the limit of this? It is a one, which is a non-zero. It means it is not convergent. But you can see which is a finite. So therefore, by using the property, we can say it is a finitely oscillate. If it goes to the infinity, then we can say it is a infinitely oscillate. Again, you can see these are my alternating series. How you can say? How you can write that? I can write this number as first number is my positive, so I can write as n plus one. 
So what is the nth term is? The numerator is my 1, 1, 1. I can write this number as also. So what is that? This is here. This is number and start from the 1 to infinity. Or you can also write this number as 1 to infinity n is minus 1 raised to power n minus 1. That's the same thing for here. Again, this will give the first number as a positive. So the an is my here. Clearly say that this number is my positive for all n. This is a decreasing sequence because this number is my 1 upon n raised to power 3 by 2, which is a decreasing sequence. Also, the limit is my 0, so therefore it is my convergent. How you write this one? So I can write this number in terms of 4 raised to power 0, 3, that is odd series, 1 here. So what is the nth term? I can write this number again, n plus 1 of a n, and start from the, so what is the a n? The numerator is my 1, denominator is 4 raised to power 0, 4 raised to power 1, and so on. So it is n minus 1 because the first term is 0. Then here is 1, 3, 5. This is my odd series. Okay, so this is again the AP. You can write the AP A plus N minus 1 into D. That is the first term. Common difference is my 2. So 2N minus 1. This is my A N of this series. Now clearly say that this is number is positive because whenever N is my greater than or equal to 1, belongs to natural number this number is my positive this number is my positive you can can you take the derivative of this it is not can it's you can take as a u upon v but it will take some lengthy procedure uh, best way that you can take as a an plus 1 minus an i can take this common now you can see this number is always less than 0 it's a uh, decreasing what is the limit you can say it's a 1 upon infinity that's a 0 so by limit test is a convergence Look about the another. Again, this is a infinite series which is alternating. So we can write this as n plus one. What is that? This is x x square x cube. This is x raised to power n. One one one. This is x plus x square plus x cube. So I can return as x raised to power n. This is one to infinity. So this is there. So we can say this number is my a n, and we can check for the alternating series test. This is positive. You can take as a ratio. Now you can say this number is less than 0 only when x lies between 0 and 1. So therefore this series is de uh, decreasing only for the x less than lies between 0 and 1. Clearly say that why it's a 0 because whenever x lies between 0 and 1, whenever x lies between 0 and 1, so anything power of n as n approaches infinity goes to the 0. So this is a 0. How you write this series? I can write this number as first number is positive, so n plus 1. So 1 by 2, 1 by 2, everything is common. It's 1 over ln. The first term is my 2, so it means I can return as n plus 1 and start from the 1 to infinity. Or you can write this number also as n 1 by 2 minus 1 over ln of n. But then you can start from the here as a 2. Then in that case, your first term is a positive, then instead of this n plus 1, you have to write this as a n. So both have the same meaning, that's on your choice. Clearly say that it's a positive number. You can take as in difference, clearly says that this is always be greater than 0. So it means it is not decreasing. So once, what is the meaning of that? The second property is not satisfied, therefore series is not converging. Again this alternating series. We can check for the a n, we can check for the derivative or for the decreasing. Clearly says that it is a decreasing or increasing. Look at that. What will happen if n is 1? So it is 1 plus 1 by 2. It is 1 plus 1, 2. So that is a 3 by 2 minus of root 2 which is a less than 0. If you take n is equal to 2, so it is my root 2 plus half minus 2 plus root 2. So clearly say that it is a root 2 plus half this number is always be less than 0. Look about the third condition. If you take as a limit, as n approaches infinity, you can, you can rationalize them. You will get as here, which is a non-zero. So third property is not satisfied, so it is not a convergent. Look at that. Now there are the two of minus 1 are there. So firstly, we can open this summation. Now, 
in this case this is a positive series so clearly say that this is a positive series it means you can't apply this Leibniz test for here because it is not an alternating series so once it is not an alternating series you can't apply the Leibniz test so which test will be applicable here you can apply the nth term test you can apply the p test you can apply the ratio test you may apply for the root test and so on so clearly say that this series is my divergent because of the p test so it's a plus sign or minus sign whenever at least one of the series is divergent the complete series is my divergent however if you look about this series it's a negative series it's alternating series so you can apply as a Leibniz test which you can see that it is my convert look at the second last examples are there which is again given to you here you can start with the derivative you can see which is a less than 0 for all n which is greater than of e why because log ln of e is my 1 again you can see the limit is my 0 which is a convergent by Leibniz test if you look about this example again this is a positive you can take that derivative which is again the less than 0 decreasing and you can take the limit which is a allocator rule you can apply that and you can say it's a zero it's a convergent series again this is a very simple example you can see whenever a n is here which is always positive you can see a n plus one minus a n you can take as a common you can see this number is always be positive whenever n is greater than or equal to one because it's n minus one so it means it is a non decreasing so condition is not satisfied the series is not converted look about this one which is positive series clearly say that it's also the decreasing also you may take as a derivative what is that derivative is my here this is minus of 2 2 and minus 1 whole square which is my less than 0 and the limit itself is 0 so it is a convergent series some questions are exercise for you you can do it yourself these four questions are there and they are, these are the answers some more questions are given to you you can try to solve it with the help of this Leibniz test so that you can able to understand this concept more clearly we will see the next lecture on the absolute and the conditional convergent series till then you can simply like share and comment on these videos best of luck students happy learning